Go ahead and get started. If you are a guest today, we are so glad that you're at the Calvary Baptist Church. In front of you, there's a connection card. If you would just take that out and fill it out. The offering plate will come by in just a few moments in the service. And if you would just place it there, there's certainly uh, many levels in which we could connect with you. We can be praying for you about something. Perhaps you need to speak with a minister. Maybe you're interested in what it means to be a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. We would love to have that opportunity to speak with you. And so if you would, just let us know um, and put that in the offering plate. And we're so glad that you are here in God's house today. Let me make a couple of announcements. Uh, there are many things in front of us uh, on the, the schedule in the month of October. Uh, we have our trunk retreat at the end of the month, and we need a lot of cars. If you could volunteer for that. Uh, to bring your car, decorate it, and uh, pass out candy. Please go by the Welcome Center and uh, be ready for that. Um, our family fellowship meal is this coming Wednesday, and I uh, would encourage you to be here at 5.30. If you can't be right here at 5.30, uh, come in when you can, and uh, there'll be a great time of, of food and fellowship for you. Um, our fall fellowship is two weeks from today, and uh, we enjoy a uh, a great time on the grounds of a bonfire and hayride and kids games and kickball and all that stuff. And so please go by and sign up for a food item that you can uh, bring to that. We have some Calvary Care shirts if you'd like to order one. Discover Calvary for anyone who is a new member or um, interested in membership in the Calvary Baptist Church is going to start two weeks from today on the 21st. And we encourage you to be a part of that if uh, that fits you. Uh, also, our, uh, our senior adults... Uh, that are going on the mystery trip. Miss Brenda has said this, if you think at all you might be interested on this or in this, um, right after service today, really important meeting. Uh, they'll be meeting uh, right through these doors uh, in the Women of Joy classroom and uh, wanted to, wants to give you some details on how you can sign up and, and uh, uh, what you may be interested in that, in, uh, that particular trip. So I invite you to come and be a part of that as well. Good morning. Uh, we're going to be doing things just a little bit differently. Um, a couple of times a year, we, we build our entire Sunday morning service around the taking of the Lord's Supper and uh, focusing upon the cross and making this our focal point. And so uh, the order of service is going to flow just a little bit differently. Um, and so I encourage you just to be attentive. I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things. Um, I'm going to throw every scripture up on the screen that I'll be using as we go through the day. I'm going to ask you, if you would, just put everything out of your hands. Um, put your phone out of your hands. If, if you just want to look at a paper Bible, that's fine as well. But anything that would be a distraction in worship today, I just encourage you just to uh, uh, put it aside. Um, I would encourage you also, um, let's limit movement um, as we go in and out today. And uh, I, I know children can get a little bit antsy, but I, I don't think it's a stretch for us to say that they can sit for 50 minutes in a room. Um, if they just need to go to the restroom, we're going to get up and shake hands in a moment, take them then. Um, we're going to dismiss our children to children's worship in just a moment. We invite them um, to go out then if uh, they just have to move, have to get a drink of water or something. But as much as we possibly can, so our reflection and our attention is on the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ today. Let's limit as much movement um, as we possibly can today. If you would just stand everywhere and join me in prayer and ask the Lord to just use this time as it is consecrated to him to worship about what the cross is and what it means and the difference that it can make in our lives. Our Father, we come to you and we thank you for this time to reflect, this time to honor you, this time to lift you up. And Father, today as we talk about the cross, and we think about the difference that it has made and the difference that it will make in the lives of people throughout all of eternity. Father, we pray that you would allow us to put aside all the things that we um, have struggled with, have dealt with in the last week, the challenges of the next week. And Lord, completely and totally to focus upon you this morning and honor you and lift you up. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Take just a moment. Greet those around you today. Shake their hands. Give them a smile this morning.
Amen. Will you lift your voices with us today as we sing? At your name, the mountain shake and crumble. Corinthians 11, the Lord Jesus is quoted to say what uh, took place on the night that he was betrayed, on the night when he instituted the Lord's Supper. He said this, as often as you eat this bread, as often as you drink this cup, you proclaim my death until I come. And so this morning, as we think about the Lord's Supper, and we think about why we would continue to do this, why 
Is this a static religious exercise or is this something that is meaningful and powerful? This morning we want to think about that word proclaim, about what we do and what we proclaim when we participate and observe the Lord's Supper together. The first thing is this, as we proclaim our confession. In recent days, this has been a word that has been reclaimed in church history. We, we speak of confession as a statement of our belief or as a statement of our faith. Um, we are often called confessional people to say that there is a belief system behind everything that we do, that this is not simply in a book telling us um, what we should be doing, that this is, this is true doctrine, this is true teaching, this is true belief that we're engaging in. So today we proclaim the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and his work that took place upon the cross. We proclaim our confession, that which we believe. You know, it certainly isn't odd to us or strange to us in our culture. Uh, maybe you've been in a meeting like this if you're a young man. It says, on my honor, I'll do my best to do my duty to God and my country to obey the scout law and to help other people at all times to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Now, if you recognize that, that's what Boy Scouts, that's the oath that they say at every meeting. It is confessional in nature. It is saying this is what we believe and this is what we're going to do. Um, in another faith tradition, we hear the word confessional as simply saying something that you go to and you proclaim what you've done wrong. That's, that's not what we mean by confessional. We mean that we are establishing that we believe that this matters. We believe that this says something. In 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 to 5, Paul said this. He says, now, brothers, I want to clarify for you the gospel I proclaim to you. You received it and have taken your stand on it. You're also saved by it. If you hold to the message I proclaim to you, unless you believe for no purpose, for I passed on to you what was most important, what I also received. And listen to these words that Paul proclaims, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. Did you notice the words that he shared there? That we are affirming completely and totally that we believe these things to be true. As that Christ died according to the scriptures. He was buried according to the strict scriptures. And, and he rose victoriously over the grave according to the scriptures. So what we do today is confessional in nature. Perhaps you might have grown up in a tradition where they would recite the Apostles' Creed often in worship. It was a creed that says this is exactly what we believe. We believe in God Almighty, the creator of all of heaven and earth. It goes on to talk about Jesus Christ and the Apostles' Creed. That these are important things that we proclaim. These are important things that we declare. And so this is not merely just a cup of juice and a, and a wafer of bread. This is us declaring to say we believe that Jesus Christ is truly the Son of God. We believe that Jesus Christ and his sacrifice truly saves people from their sins. And we believe and declare that we have a personal relationship with this Lord and that he has cleansed our sins and that he is going to give us eternal life that comes in Christ alone. In 1, Corinthians, or 1 Timothy 1, 15, Paul said this. He says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. That's what Paul said of himself. That is a word of confession. That is a word of declaration to say, I was a sinner and Jesus Christ came into this world to save me, and he has this ability. So today we proclaim what we believe. We proclaim the beauty of the cross. We proclaim the glory of the death of Christ, and we say that it matters. 
We say to a lost and dying world looking on that this is not just simply the hoops that we jump through, that this is meaningful, and we're telling you that the word of God is true. I'm going to ask you to stand at this time. There's an old hymn of our faith that we like to sing. It's called, How Firm a Foundation. How firm our confession is on what we believe and what we hold dear. Sing this out to the Lord together. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. One more can he say than to you he has said to you who for refuge from Jesus have fled. Fear not, I am with thee, O oh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand upheld by my righteous omnipotent hand. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace all sufficient shall be my supply. The
Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 through 6 says, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and rejected, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he, has, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to his work. Think about those sobering words that we've just read from Isaiah 53 that proclaim to us the cross. If we think about what our confession is, that's our present reality. This is who we are. This is what we believe consistently and continually. If there's a past reality of the Lord's Supper, it is looking back at the event of the cross, recognizing that every page of Scripture begins to speak and point to the work of Christ upon the cross, that victoriously Christ proclaimed to us from his love upon the cross that you can have fellowship, you can have relationship with your creator for eternity because of what I am accomplishing here. So today we proclaim the cross. You ever thought about what that really means? I've thought about what it really means because we doctor our crosses up and we certainly want to make it the focal point of our understanding and our minds today and we make them look pretty. But the cross is an instrument of death. It's an instrument of capital punishment. Yesterday I was riding with my family in a car and I have no idea how we got on this subject, but we started talking about capital punishment. And we started talking about means of capital punishment. And, and so the question came from one of my children. So, well, how do they administer that? And so we began to talk about things like um, lethal injection. We began to talk about things like the electric chair. And then ultimately having all of these things in my mind, knowing how, how difficult of a process that must be for those that administer it and for, for the, certainly the one that receives it and the, the pain and the struggle that is there. And then the cross comes into mind as well. This was simply an instrument of public execution. One of the most that the world, one of the worst that the world has ever known, it was discovered by the Assyrians, it was perfected by the Romans, and Romans would crucify hundreds of people a day at particular times of their rule in the Roman Empire. That when we proclaim the cross, here's what we're proclaiming. We are proclaiming death. We are proclaiming that the death of Christ matters. To read the New Testament is to recognize that the death of Christ is often referred to. And it's not often referred to morbidly. It's spoken of gloriously, victoriously. What Paul himself said, if I'm ever going to glory, if I'm ever going to boast, if I have anything that I can say, about and, and let everybody know that this is really a good thing about me, Paul says, I glory in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now think about that. Uh, let, let's, let's define that word out. If I'm ever going to glory, if I'm ever going to boast about anything, I boast in the instrument of death that the Lord endured for my sins. And so today when we take the cup, and we know what it's representative of, that it's representative of the blood and the body of Christ, the body that was broken and the blood that was shed for you and me. We proclaim the beauty of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of all the things that become, could become the symbol for the Christian church, it's not a dove, even though we use that symbolically. 
It's not a steeple. That's more of a convention of modern man. What's the symbol that fully encompasses all we believe, that fully holds the difference that our faith makes? It's the cross. It's an instrument of death. It's an instrument that was used for Christ to become our substitute, for him to give his life for us. In modern days, there has been discussions to take the goriness of the cross out of the gospel. They said it doesn't appeal to a modern audience. We're, we're desensitized to these particular things. All of those things, all of those arguments fall at the feet of the scriptures when we read things like I will glory in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then when, when Christ even spoke of what he was going to be doing in his death, that, that he will tear down the temple in his death and he will rebuild it with his life to let them know that no longer are you going to find God in a building that you are going to find God in perfect relationship with you in your hearts. So this was the work of, of the cross that we proclaim, that we lift up, and we show our gratitude to the Lord for on a regular basis. So today we proclaim this cross to a world to let them know that this event in history matters and it will matter for all of eternity as you think about the words that we just read from Isaiah 53 he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed the one that engaged in the action was Christ, the one that received all of the benefit was us. So when we celebrate this instrument of death, we look at it as the, de as the instrument that took our place, that took our debt, the substitute that stood in our place and made relationship with God possible for eternity. There's a lot of words we could say Hopefully this brings us to our faces in worship. It, it lets us recognize the significance that God places upon his creation that he himself would die for the sins of it. But certainly the words thank you to the Lord are something that we would cry out from our heart continually and totally. We're going to sing a song right now called Jesus Thank You. And I want you to reflect upon the word of the cross. Reflect upon how we are proclaiming it today and the difference that it makes in your life continually. Let's all stand.
You're the God of this city. You're the King of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. into our last proclamation. We proclaim our confession, our belief. We proclaim the cross and the instrument that Christ was our substitutionary atonement. He stood in our place. And now we proclaim our commission. Ultimately, these are the words of Christ and ultimately this is the, the cry of his heart as he says, you proclaim my death until I come. That the church present and accounted for, speaks up and says these things that we believe, and this event that we remember, and what took place in time matters. And it matters for the people that live in the world in which we live and that need to hear the message of the gospel, the need to hear the good news that Jesus loves them and Jesus died for them and Jesus wants to save them from their sins. John chapter number 20 Verses 19 to 21, Jesus said these words as 
a commission to his disciples. He declared this. In the evening of the first day of the week, the disciples were gathered together with the doors locked because of their fear of the Jews. Then Jesus could, stood among, came and stood among them and said, Peace to you. Having said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And so the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. What an incredible moment for the disciples. They had seen their Lord on the instrument of death. They had seen him cry out, it is finished. They'd seen him give up his spirit. They had seen him taken to the grave. And they knew that he was dead. And now their Lord is there before them. And he is showing them his hands. And he's showing them his side. And the physical wounds that are on his body. And what he had accomplished for them. And they are rejoicing. And that's when Jesus said to them, listen, guys, things are going to be a little bit different from here on out. Everything that I told you about that I was about to leave you is, is really about to happen. Everything that I told you about that I was going to give you the Holy Spirit and, and he was going to be your comforter and he was going to prepare you and he was going to bring to mind all the things that I said, all that's about to happen. And he said those glorious words, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. Think about the task that was just given to the disciples at that particular point. Christ was sent into the world to redeem the world. The Bible says of Christ that he says he, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And so th that was his assignment. That's what he came to do. That's what he came to accomplish. And now Jesus is saying to his disciples, everything that I came to do, everything that I came to accomplish, I've accomplished. And the Father sent me to accomplish it. And, and now it's done. Now I'm sending you and you will be my witnesses. And you will proclaim of the good news of the gospel everywhere. And we read the story, and they did just They went all over the world. They faced persecution. They faced martyrdom. They faced everything in the world, and they continued to tell the message. And, and you know, the commission still stands. The commission still stands. We have received this from the Lord. We've received the message. We've seen the beauty of the cross. And, and it is one thing to reap the rewards of the cross, but also remember that it, along with the cross comes the responsibility of telling others as well. If this is the greatest thing that's ever happened, and if it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to us, doesn't it stand to reason that we're going to desire that for those that have yet to find it? We remember the cross, and we remember our faith. And it thrust us to tell the good news. Littered on the roadways all across the state of Kentucky. You'll be driving along a highway and, and you'll see something from time to time. You'll see a cross on the side of the road. And, and we know what that cross represents. It represents the place where a tragic automobile accident took place someone's life was taken. And their family looks at that particular site and, and they memorialize it. They continue to place flowers there. They put up a, a monument or they'll put up a cross. They'll give some details. They'll put a name, maybe a picture on it. Why? Simply to say this, is that their life mattered and we want people to know about it. We want you to see our loved one. We want you to see where, 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 what, what kind of individual they were, and, and we still love them, and their life matters. You know what the cross of the Lord Jesus does for us? It's telling us this life matters, and, and, and that people need to know this life. People need to know our Savior. They need to know our Lord. They need to recognize what he did and what he accomplished for them. In the coming weeks, we're going to challenge you what we're calling our 24-7 offering. And I want to challenge you to make plans now to be in church the first Sunday in November as, as we are going to launch this and talk about what we want to do in terms of the commission of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and how we fund that and how we realize it's much bigger than an offering. It's something we're giving ourselves to as well 
and some opportunities that we have throughout this morning, some mission testimonies of individuals that have engaged in foreign missions and the difference that it makes why because they are living out the commission of the Lord Jesus Christ and how we can all participate in this eat this bread you drink this cup you proclaim my death until I come who in your circles who in your life needs to hear the proclamation of this message right now not the message I'm preaching but the message that you can tell them from the Word of God about the one that gave their life on the cross for them and the difference that it will make for them for eternity there's an old hymn that we sing called Rose. Just a moment, I'm going to have you stand and sing this with me. And perhaps there's someone today that needs to make a public declaration of faith in Christ. Perhaps this is something you've thought about, something you've pondered, and you'd like to know a little bit more about what it means to follow Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. As we've talked about the cross, realize that the object of the cross was you. The object of the cross was you, that your Savior stood in your place and took your punishment and took death for you so that you could live eternally with the Lord. That's the power of the gospel. If you'd like to respond, I challenge you as we sing through the words of this hymn. It's simply titled, Man of Sorrows, but it's not about sorrow, it's about victory. And how the Lord has proclaimed his death and overcome the beauty, the beauty of the cross. And, 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 and has said to generations, here I am for you. For you to have eternal life. Let's stand and sing this out together. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a say.
want you to think about one verse of scripture as we go. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter number 3 gave a benediction. He was speaking to the church. He was saying everything that we've said and everything that we proclaim matters. And he said this now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in you. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.